Hello everybody, uh, welcome to Jeff the Pharmacist. So today I want to um, talk a little bit about what's what's going down in pharmacy. Um, I'm sure a lot of you aren't even going outside, engaging in any kind of economic activity. You're probably just at home um, looking at your stocks and YouTube videos. Um, so today I, I want to discuss a little bit about uh, what, what the situation is like uh, in pharmacies. So um, some of you are probably curious about the supply situation. Are we seeing um, drug shortages? I um, anticipated in my earlier videos when I first started uh, doing a little bit of blogging about the coronavirus issue in China, I kind of anticipated some supply issues. Uh, we're not seeing real dangerous uh, drug, drug shortages. I don't know if that will happen in the future. We are seeing people stock stock up on medication and pharmacies stock up on medication but um, we're not seeing uh, broad shortages of, of medicine now wholesalers uh, have decided to kind of cut cut pharmacies off on ordering because a lot of pharmacies are ordering more than they normally would and uh, warehouses are anticipating shortages on medication so we are seeing where we'll order some some uh, medication and they're actually cutting us off. So we're seeing, um, for instance, like insulin, we'll order insulin and only send in a uh, part of our order. Uh, there's a little bit of a, uh, on some inhalers we have seen where there are, uh, there are some shortages and they're actually cutting back what, what, what we can order and kind of, it's almost like they're rationing uh, certain medications. Now I don't know if that's uh, from the manufacturer, like if they're not manufacturing enough uh, or if that's from the wholesalers, but we are seeing some issues. Um, one kind of scary one is the um, albuterol rescue inhalers we're seeing where, actually for a short period where it was on back order, but it does seem like that, that it's still where we're able to get, get that um, important medication. Now, if you're a rheumatoid arthritis patient and you're on hydroxychloroquine, you might find where uh, you might be cut back to a 30-day supply or some pharmacies might actually not have that medication in stock because when Trump started talking about it, I think that's when the hydroxychloroquine shortage occurred and now it's very difficult for people to actually get that uh, medication. For instance, it's like completely on back order. I've re heard reports of people uh, where doctors would write kind of fake prescriptions or prescriptions for themselves to kind of get the medication. I haven't seen much of that. I think I've seen that occur once, but we're actually uh, sort of keeping the medication for our patients, whatever we have on the shelf, because we, we can't really uh, afford to give that to new patients that maybe they, they're getting it because they think it might protect them from coronavirus or something like that. And really that kind of behavior is, uh, I think, unethical if you're a doctor and you're writing prescriptions for yourself or for your family for an emergency supply. Uh, you should stop doing that and a lot of pharmacists will actually uh, probably deny those prescriptions or straight up just tell you that we're not going to fill it. Um, if you are a person who's um, worried about being quarantined or uh, and you want to kind of stock up on some medication, a lot of ph uh, pharmacy benefit managers or insurance companies are allowing early refills on things. Obviously, uh, pharmacies can't be on the phone with insurance companies all the time, so a lot of these uh, companies do do have specific like coronavirus uh, codes you can put in or when you fill the prescription or a lot of them are just letting early refills go through on certain medications maybe the cheap ones or whatever I don't know how they make their decisions on that so you might find where if you are concerned you can ask the pharmacist uh, do you have any kind of a disaster override and they might be able to help you with that um, if you are um, concerned about that you know, and if, and if you uh, go to a retail pharmacy or community pharmacy, um, whether it be in one of the big box stores or a privately owned pharmacy, a lot of times they'll probably take your uh, credit card over the phone so that they can walk the prescription out to you. And that way, um, if you're afraid to go into a store, pharmacies are like a hot zone, really. Uh, if you think about coronavirus, I mean, I work in a grocery store pharmacy and I'm sure that um, some of the employees have been exposed to coronavirus. We're in an area that has active community spread and I don't see how um, uh, employees haven't been, uh, haven't been exposed to it. And I think it's a matter of time before more people get the disease 
and get positive tests, especially once the positive tests are out. And I think we could really see a workforce issue um, where people are calling out sick. I mean, they already are seeing a workforce issue where uh, vulnerable, uh, vulnerable employees, employees that maybe they have a compromised immune system, they're older, they're basically saying they, you know, they can't go to work for health reasons, which I think is reasonable for some people. And some of the employees that I see, um, sometimes I think, well, oh, maybe, you know, maybe you should just go home. Maybe you should call, you know, call out sick or whatever. I admire the dedication, but some people are older, and you know, this. We don't know a lot about coronavirus. We don't know how it affects everybody. I don't know. You know, it's like your mind plays tricks on you. I'm wondering, do I have it or do I have seasonal allergies? I'm like, I have some pressure in my chest. I don't know what's going on, you know. Do I have coronavirus or am I just, you know, crazy? So, you know, there's a lot, you know, you can, I mean, people are going crazy with the wiping and the gloves and I wear a mask now at work. I've never done that before. And I was a mask early adopter. I've always been a big believer in the mask. I thought the government telling you that masks don't work was just a bullshit way of, uh, just a bullshit way of uh, trying to protect their limited personal protective equipment supply, which is what it is, but they should just call it that. Just say uh, to people, we can't, uh, we can't recommend masks for the general public because there's not enough to go around. Just tell people that and maybe they'll um, make their own or something. I don't know, but lying to people and saying they don't work, I think is, is bad because you see uh, elderly people come into a retail setting and they're um, completely exposed and they could get it and it, and they could die and they could be a you know a casualty so uh, I thought I think the CDC really misstepped when they said that the masks didn't work um, if you know if, if you're a immunocompromised patient uh, and your pharmacy has delivery definitely get them to deliver your medication but I, I think most pharmacies, they might not be advertising it, but if you, if, if you don't feel, if you're really freaking concerned about going into the store, which you know you really should be, and it's for, for those of us that work in, in the pharmacy or that we work in grocery stores, it's like, ah, oh, why am I coming to work? Am I crazy? So yeah, you should just ask your pharmacy team, hey, can you have somebody run the prescription out to me? I'm sure that they'd be willing to do that for you. Some weird things are happening. Like I'm, I'm seeing a lot less people getting vaccinated uh, because of the close contact. I, I don't, I don't blame them. Um, when we do vaccinate people now, I actually have to wear like a face shield. I feel like I'm going into uh, an Ebola hot zone, but um, I, f I feel more comfortable wearing it, obviously. But it's getting a little weird. Um, you know, I, I kind of predicted that this would. Uh, that coronavirus would come here, but I don't know if I really believed it, if that makes sense, because it is kind of a, a weird reality we're living in. There's tons of people outside in my neighborhood playing and everything else, and not a lot of uh, commercial activity going on. So, um, you know, if, uh, if you uh, want to help your pharmacist, just check out the, uh, the video I made about how to uh, help your pharmacist. I think the general public and their patients have been super just really awesome mostly. Um, I mean, I I think I could get a, I could, you know, on the other hand, I could get a uh, tattoo on my forehead that says we're out of masks, alcohol, hand sanitizer, and people would still ask me if I have hand sanitizer. And when you're wearing a mask, people ask you if you have masks, obviously they're, I don't know, I have somebody come up to me and say, you got any masks like that? I have masks. We're not selling any, but I have. I've sold my. I got from my Chinese, former Chinese roommate who had to call somebody in China, have it shipped to some other person, lie on the custom form, and then get it sent to me. And so yeah, I have masks, but I'm not selling any because I, you know, they're not, you know, companies that my product that my company sells. So, but uh, it's getting a little, it's getting a little bizarre world. I hope I hope you found this uh, interesting. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, Please subscribe and stay healthy, stay safe. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.